Today, I will configure a protected application against the CSRF attack. I will configure both my Sprint Boot backend and my Angular frontend to see how they interact together. To protect my application against the CSRF attack, I must configure both the frontend and the backend. Because the CSRF protection ensures the synchronization between the frontend and the backend. The CSRF protection ensures that no attacker steps in the middle. But let's see how the CSRF attack works. Let's pick a frontend application. Every time the frontend makes a request to the backend, the browser sends all the cookies related to this backend. Backend. Those cookies contain the authentication information, the session information. The frontend has nothing to do because it's the default behavior of the browser to avoid the JavaScript to access and manipulate the cookies. Let's say now I receive an email with a link. The link will open a hacker website and make a request to my bank website. As the browser stores all the cookies, I'm already connected to my personal account. And now the script sends some automatic requests to withdraw 200 euros from my bank account. This is a very simplified workflow on how the CSRF attack works. And now, how do I prevent this attack? As the browser sends automatically the cookies, I must have a second token stored in a different system. My frontend must request a token, a CSRF token, and store it in a different storage system, a variable or the local storage. The backend will associate each generated CSRF token with a user session. And when calling the backend, the frontend must include this new token. I can send it in a header. When the backend receives the request, it receives both the cookies and the CSRF token. With the cookies, it associates the request with a session. Then check if the CSRF token belongs to this session. As the CSRF token is not in the cookies, the browser won't send it, so an attacker won't be able to read the token, and the backend will reject any request without this token. As said, to be protected against the CSRF attack, I must configure both my frontend and my backend. So let's create both projects, Angular for the frontend and Spring Boot for the backend. But before going, remember to subscribe to my channel, I just ask you a simple click. I will start creating a Spring Boot project with Spring Initializer. I change the group name, Sergio CSRF, the artifact, backend, the name, ensure it's a Maven project with Java, the latest version of Spring Boot, a jar packaging, I will still with Java 17 and add dependencies web to create some endpoints, security to protect my application, and Lombok for the code generation. That's all. Let's download the project and open it with IntelliJ. Let's start by creating two endpoints, one to get all the available messages and another to append new messages. But first I will comment the security dependency. I want to first test my endpoints, then I will add the authentication. I reload the Maven project and let's go creating the endpoints. I will create a package first, controllers, and the controller, content controller. It's a REST controller, the first one get all the messages, it returned a response entity with content detail, a detail that I will create later. Messages, response entity, okay, from a service. I will inject the service. and add the Lombok annotation. Let's continue creating the second endpoint. I will create the service later. This time is a post to create messages. It returns a content detail with a request body.
and returns the result of the service. But when reading, in fact, it returns a list of messages, of content. Let's start by creating the DTO. It will be in another package named DTOs. And inside content DTO a record. Only one field. Message. Now I can import the DTO. Okay, let's create the service in another package. Oh, let's move this package and create the services package. Let's add the service annotation and the two methods. I can import it now. I create the method get messages, which returns a list. And let's create the create messages method. I will create a list in the service where I save all the messages. That's what I return, and when creating, I just append and return the created message. That's all. Okay, let's try this first to validate it. I have an error. I must import the list. Let's start this now. I run my application, I run my backend. Started correctly, and from a terminal, curl localhost ad ad messages. It returns nothing as my list is empty by default. Let's create a message. Let's put the header first. Content type application JSON, and now the data. Messages, message, hi. Okay, it returns me the created message. And now if I fetch all the messages, I have this one. This works fine from my terminal, but it won't work if I request it from my frontend. It won't work because of the course. So let's add the course configuration. Let's create a config package where we put all the configurations. And I will put the course configurations in a class named webconfig. Add the configuration annotation and the bin web MVC configurer. I will just implement the course mapping. This mapping will be applied to all the routes. I load it origins, just my frontend. My frontend will be running on the port 4200. I allow some headers like content type and XCSRF token. This will be the header used by the CSIF token. I also allow some methods. Get and post. Finally, I allow the credentials. This is to accept receiving the cookies with the credentials. I have two endpoints and the course configuration in my backend. Let's create the frontend project and wire all together. As said, I will create an Angular project. ng new frontend. I will leave the default values, no routing, CSS, and it will download the default dependencies. Now I will just add one dependency, materials.
Yes, let's download the latest version. And I will pick the default theme. I would want to use the typography styles. Okay, I continue accepting the default values. That's it. Before starting, I will switch to a dark mode. Now, let's start the project. Okay, that's the default content of an Angular project. I will delete all and start by creating a simple header with a title and a logo. I will start by downloading an Angular logo. I will put it in the assets. Here it is. Now I will go to the app component and delete all. And just leave my header. Ok, the header is there. Let's modify it. Let's start by a header tag and put my logo. Assets, logo, PNG. I will put some style on it. An alternative logo. That's it. Okay, yes. I will also add a title. App title my CSRF app. Here it is, but as said, I will apply some style. From app logo and to app header. First of all, in the logo, I will set a height. better. And app title. I will set the font size for the title. And in the header, I will just add some background color. OK, a fixed height, some padding, some color for the text, and align all of this in the center. Let's see the result, yes. Let's continue with another component to display all the messages. ng generate component content display. Let's name it. I go back to the app component and add this new component. I will wrap it into another div. I will add some style to this div. Content display. Here it is. I will add some style to this main component just to center it. Some padding, some margin, and the width. Okay, it's in the middle now. Let's go to the content display component. I will go to the materials website to download a card where to display the content. Let's go to the components, go to the cards, let's see some examples, yes, this one, view the code, I will pick the first one. Pass, I delete the buttons. Let's see the result. OK, yes. I must add the imports. In the TypeScript file. Let's 
standalone and imports the buttons and the card as it's a standalone component I must add it in the module okay better now let's go to the TypeScript and read the content from the backend I will read it on the onInit method I must inject the HTTP module constructor private HTTP HTTP client I must import it import HTTP client from angular common HTTP HTTP get I will get a content type from the URL HTTP localhost 8080 messages and subscribe to the result it will be a data of content and I will store the results into a variable messages and read all the content the field message let's create this variable messages which is a string and initialized empty content.ts export class content with only one field constructor a public message which is a string but to use the HTTP client I must go on the modules and import the HTTP module from angular common http and add it in the imports better now i will edit the html to be dynamic with the content a dynamic title and the subtitle i will use paragraph ng4 let message of messages and print a single message okay I have the title and if I inspect the network I can see the messages endpoint which is requested to my backend but it answers an empty list now I have the front end which communicates with the backend but I have an empty response I need to create a form to submit messages I will generate another component ng generate component content input I will add this input in the app component content input here it is I will go to the materials website to pick a form let's pick the form fields a simple form field okay I go to the HTML, copy all of this and replace by a form. Copy the TypeScript imports
now it's a standalone component import with all of this the select the input and the form field there is also some css let's pick it okay let's see the result i must update the modules as now it's a standalone here it is i will edit the html to have only the needed fields add message and that's all I will link the form fields message form which is a ng form and on the submit action call the method on submit this is linked to the model and now I need a button let's go to materials website pick some buttons this one seems great basic add the imports okay i need to add some more imports as now i am using the form modules i need the common module from angular common and i need the ng form also the forms module from angular forms Now I need to create the onSubmit method. Submit. Okay, I have my content displayed. I will start by creating the variable where to store the form values. View child named messages form. Message form. is an ng form let's import the view child okay now on the submit event i must call the endpoint in the backend so i need the http client in my component in the constructor i inject the http client Add the import angular common http and now add the method the request http post to my backend localhost 8080 messages with the content message form all the values and I will add an option with credentials true I need this option to tell the browser to send all the cookies with the request this is necessary because this is an Ajax request and now subscribe to the result data which is of type content and the result I will call an upper method, a method from the parent. So I have an event and then emit the data. Let's create this event. I 
output and event emitter. Let's add the content import. Oh, it's not square brackets, but curly brackets. And I will just add any. Okay, but now I have to bind this event. Let's go to the root component. When the input is submitted, I call this method on message created with the event data. But I need this method to be inside the content display because the messages variable is inside the content display. So let's move it inside this. Content display HTML and I will put it on the top. And now let's create this method with an input as message of type string and returns void. When received, I push the message into the messages list. And now add the content input in the imports. Okay, it works. Let's try this now. Okay, I post the messages with the form and I read the messages with the display component. Okay, I have my frontend, which can now request my backend, and my backend returns data. I will now add the Sprint Security to implement the CSRF workflow. Still, when I add the Sprint Security, I need to implement an authentication system. So, I will implement a simple authentication system. I start by uncommenting the Sprint Security dependency. Go to the POM XML and uncomment it. I reload the Maven project and now let's create the authentication controller. Go to the packages. Into the controllers package, I create a new class, controller. I start by adding the REST controller annotation and the reward args annotation from Lombok. My endpoint will be a post mapping to sign in. It returns a response entity of a user DTO and receives a request body of type signed in DTO. Let's create those objects as records into the DTOs package. The user will have an ID, the login and a name. And the sign in DTO will be a record with the login and the password. Now I will call a service, a notification service, to sign in with the DTO. It will return a user DTO. I inject it. I will create it later. With the authenticated user, I will inject it in the security context. I will start by getting the security context. Security context holder, get context. In the context, I set the authentication, a new user password authentication token with the user, no password, and no roles. This context, I must inject it into a security repository. Security context repository. Repository, save context, and now I save it. It needs the request and the response. Let's add those input items. HTTP servlet request HTTP servlet response and finally return the response entity okay with the user and I initialize the repository as 
an HTTP session security context repository. Let's go to the service now. Into the services package, I add the service annotation and as before the required args annotation. The method returned a user DTO, sign in and accept a sign in DTO. What does this method? It will check the incoming password with an accepted password. For that I need a password encoder. I get the incoming password from the char array and compile it with a hashed password. I will hard code this hashed password for simplicity. If it's correct, I will return a user DTO that I will create by myself. Otherwise, I throw an exception, a runtime exception. This hashed password will be a constant. With what value? With this hash. This hash corresponds to the word password. I should create an aspect to manage all the exceptions, but I've already done that in another video. Check the link in the corner if you want to know more about how to handle the exceptions in a Spring Boot application. And now, let's configure the Spring security. Let's start now with the password encoder. I go to the config package and create a new class. Password config. It will be a component and inject this bin. Password encoder. I will use a bcrypt password encoder. And now the Spring Security filter chain. I create a new class, security config, add the configuration annotation and the enable web security. Declare the bin returns a security filter chain. Let's start with the CSRF. For now, I disable the CSRF. Let's go step by step. The session management. I use the session creation policy always, because to avoid complexity, I will use a stateful application with a cookie for the session. This way, all the authentication is managed by Spring. And now the roots. I accept a post on the endpoint, sign in, permit all. I also allow the options method to all the endpoints. And the rest of the requests must be authenticated. Return the HTTP build and catch the exceptions. Ok, my backend is now protected with a simple authentication system, with a hard-coded password, but it's enough for today. If you want to see a more advanced authentication system, check the link in the corner. Let's go now to the frontend to create my login form. Let's create a new component. ng generate component the login form. Now I will go again to the materials website to pick a login form. Form fields, examples, this simple form. Copy all the code. Let's go to the new component. All will be inside a form. Also copy the imports. I pass them in the TypeScript file. 
imports and standalone. I also need to import forms module from Angular forms. Let's start displaying this form. Let's go to the root component. On the top, I add the login form. Okay, here it is my login form on the top and the messages below. But I want to display the login form only if the user is not authenticated. So I will create a variable in the root component, authenticated, which starts to be false. And in the HTML, I will display the login form if authenticated is false and display the content if authenticated is true. Okay, it's better now. Let's come back to the login form and edit this. So logging, remove the rest, and another field as password. Input goes to a login variable from an ng module. And this input goes to a variable named password to the ng module. Let's declare the model login form which is an ng form and I will put some style. And the fields login full width. Let's add some style in the CSS file. The login form and on the login full width. Min width, max width, and center in the middle. Now take the full width for each field. Let's come back to the HTML and add the button, the submit button. I will take the same as the content input. Login and copy the imports. Here it is. Let's go to the form again and bind the submit action to a method. On submit, I call a method named on submit. No, it's ng submit. Let's create this method. It returns void. And we'll call the backend to authenticate the user. So I need the HTTP client. I inject it in the constructor. I add the import. Call the post method on HTTP localhost 8080 sign in with the values of the login form. Let's create this variable. It will be a view child login form ng form. 
add the import at the view child import and subscribe to the response. This will call an event emitter on login event and emit. This will just change the value of the authenticated variable on the root component. Let's create this event emitter. Add the imports and now bind this output. We must go to the root component, bind this output with a method called on signed in, on signed in, because I'm already signed, I'm already authenticated. And now create this method it just changes the value of authenticated let's test the login i put any login and the password must be the hard-coded value password okay it changed the flag authentication from false to true and now it displays the messages, the content display. Now I have my frontend ready with the login. Next step, add the CSRF protection. But the CSRF protection in the frontend requires that each request contains an additional parameter. So I need to modify the way each request is sent. Let's create my own HTTP client. All what I will do is just wrap the existing HTTP client into my own HTTP client. This way I can modify the request before sending it. ng generate a service HTTP client. I will start by injecting the HTTP client, the real HTTP client. Add the import from Angular common HTTP and now create two methods. The get with a URL as a string, which returns for simplicity I will use any. And a post method with a URL and data. It returns any. Let's start implementing the get. It turns this HTTP get with the URL of my backend, localhost 8080. Now I concat the URL and add the options with credentials. That's it. True. Let's go to the post. Return this HTTP post with the URL of the backend. I concat the URL I want, add the data and the options with credentials. I return the promise, this way I subscribe to the response when calling those methods. And now I inject this service into the components. Let's start by the content display. From HTTP client service. In content input and in the logging. And now use this. In the constructor, let's go to the input. I replace in the constructor and in the login form, I replace in the constructor. Now I have to adapt the methods. Let's start by the display. 
get messages and subscribe in the input post messages I don't need the options and the data and in the login form post sign in and the data and as said I subscribe to the response now I have a full stack application protected with the authentication. It's a stateful application. What I will do now is protect my backend with the CSRF protection. I will start by enabling the CSRF protection in the Spring Security config. Customizer with defaults. But now I have to add a new matcher get on the CSRF endpoint. I will create now the CSRF endpoint, but it must be public. The options request are the ones used with the course configuration. They are sent automatically by the browser and I need them to be unprotected because I don't want to apply the CSRF protection on those requests. As those requests are made by the browser, I can drop them to add an additional parameter. Let's create now another controller to create the CSRF token. CSRF controller. It's a REST controller and just one endpoint. A GET on CSRF token. Public CSRF token. CSRF token. Those values will automatically be injected by Spring because I've enabled the CSRF protection. That's all on the backend side. Now on the frontend, I need to request the CSRF token at the beginning. Then include the CSRF on each request. A solution can be to request the CSRF token per session, per user session. But a stronger solution is to request the CSRF token per request. This solution requires more implementation. So I choose the easy one. Request the CSIF token at the beginning means when loading the application. Let's go to the root component to request the token. I start adding the HTTP client, client service. And in the ng on init method, the one which is called when loading the root component, I call get csrf. Let's go to the service to create this method. It returns void this http get on http localhost 8080 csrf token and subscribe to the response data any and the data I will store it in a variable named csrf token let's create it string initialized empty and now in the post method, I must add the CSRF token. I will add it in the headers. The CSRF token only applies to requests which change the server state, like a post, a put, a patch or delete. Requests like head or get are not impacted by the CSRF protection. Let's add a header, new HTTP headers. with the name x csrf token this is the default header name for the csrf token and take the variable let's import the header and try all together here is my frontend when loading the application i have the token request which receives the token the csrf token with its name as i put in the angular application 
Let's now log in. I have two signing requests, the pre-flight and the post. The post contains the body I've sent. It also contains the CSRF token in the header. Next to that, I have the messages request with an empty response as I added no message. And as said, the get request doesn't need the CSRF token. If I add a new message, I take the post request and I see the CSRF token again. I've created a backend project with Spring Security. I've created two endpoints, one to read messages and one to create messages. Then I've created the frontend project. I've created two components to display the messages and a form to create messages. Then I've added the security to my backend. I've created a login endpoint where I add my user to the security context. I've configured my application with Spring Security as a stateful application. And I've indicated which endpoints are public. In the frontend, I've added another component with the login form. Finally, I've added the CSRF token configuration in the backend with a new endpoint. In the frontend, I call this endpoint when loading the root component. And in the HTTP client wrapper, I add the CSRF token to the post request as a header. That's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Please click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and see you soon. Bye!